Keep yourselves in the love of God, verse 21, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, keep that environment flooded by, your, by the flesh. All right, verse 21. Uh, Who is he writing to, the book of Jews? The believers, all right, the believers, those that are saved, preserved in Christ Jesus, in verse number one, called. And so he says, he says, uh, keep yourselves in the love of God. What does it mean to keep yourselves in something? Stay with it. What is it? Stay. Stay, stay, with, it. stay with it. All right, uh, now, how does a person get into the love of God in the first place? By accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Uh, in other words, can the unsaved, godless people keep themselves in the love of God? No, no they can't. Uh, do all Christians keep themselves in the love of God? Should all Christians keep themselves in the love of God? It should be. Now, uh, what does it mean to keep yourselves in the love of God? To be pure, I guess, to, 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 do, to be obedient to and to trust, to be obedient to Him and His Word and what He tells us or asks us to do. All right, so be obedient. And to, in other words, uh, if you are against the will of God, doing things that are wicked and sinful, is that keeping yourselves in the love of God? Yeah. Now, see, God wants you to, us to be pure and clean as best we can and walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, not in our flesh. So the keeping ourselves in the love of God is not always easy, but God wants us to. And it says, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. What does mercy mean again? Not, us not getting answer. something? That you deserve, see? What's grace? Getting something you don't deserve. And mercy, not getting something you do deserve. God's mercy. The prayer of the man that went into the temple and the Pharisee and the other man, what did that sinner pray? What did the sinner pray? God, be merciful unto me. What's it? Go get a dance out of him. From the other room. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Yes. What's that? He's got headphones on too. Okay, that's good. So he still heard him. Okay. Well, sometimes you come right into this room, we'd be able to hear him a little bit better. How's that? <laughs> All right. So, uh, God be merciful to me. In other words, don't give me the things I deserve, but uh, give me the things. Uh, don't give me the things I deserve. So, verse twenty-one. Uh, keep yourselves in in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. What do they mean to looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ? What would that be? Looking for the mercy for of the Lord salvation. Jesus. Possibly salvation. Uh, what else? Yes. What is it? Forgiveness. Probably forgiveness. Huh? There are many mercies of God. Many mercies of God. The mercies of God are uh, many, indeed. And uh, the last part of this verse, unto eternal life. When does that take place? When you get saved. When, when you get when saved, when you get born again, genuinely yeah. trusting Christ as Savior, I ask, yes, yeah, fine. Uh, Titus 3, 5, is that the number? Yes, that's right, good. Is there mercy in that verse? Yes, let's say Titus 3, 5. Not by works of righteousness, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. All right, so these are Titus 3, 5, by God's mercy He saved us. So, uh, unto eternal life. Uh, you say that starts when you're genuinely saved. I asked a lady recently uh, if uh, she was saved. And the lady told me, well, she's a member of the Baptist Church. I said, well, does that make you saved? Well, I said, when the, the, the lady said that she had some children, there were Lutheran churches and some were Catholic churches. And so I asked the question, you know, uh, uh, what does it mean? Have you, I asked the lady, I said, have you, have you been, ever been saved? What does that mean? I said, have you ever personally trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? You realize you're saying, well, yes. So there's a question, but you must, in order to have eternal life, uh, now you say it starts the minute you're saved. What does it mean to be saved and how do you do it? Ask God to forgive you of your sins. All right, ask God to forgive you. What else? Believe in death. Believe in burial and resurrection of yeah. Jesus Christ. In other words, you ask him to forgive your sins, but on what basis can he forgive your sins? On the blood of Jesus Christ. And what, why did he shed that blood? By, by 
died on the cross, died on the cross of Calvary. He died in the place of all sinners, and that's what it takes. Uh, accepting that that death is for you, and genuinely trusting that Savior who died for your sins. That's what it means to be saved and have eternal life. Eva? We're born a sinner. Some people don't sin as much as other people, so they mm-hmm. don't recognize their sin. Mm-hmm. We're born a sinner. Mm-hmm. That's right. Oh, that's right. Saved by grace. Mm-hmm. Romans 3, 23. All have sinned and come short to the glory of God. And one of our verses was 6.23 today, wasn't it? What's 6.23 say? For the wages. For the wages. That's right. Wages, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so, <laughs> that's right. I mean, we have to clarify. I mean, do we, are, we, are we sinners because we sin, or are we, we sin because we're sinners? We sin because we're sinners, don't we? Right. Uh, and uh, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. When does a person become a sinner? As soon as he's born. Yep. Uh, what, did, what did David mean in Psalm 51, I think? Uh, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. What does that mean? Well, the sin of Adam. Sin of Adam. On. Passed on. on. When does that say that sin began, according to that verse? At conception. At conception. Uh, it doesn't mean it's sin. My, in other words, it's not sinful to conceive. It's the question of the source, the beginning of sin, was at conception, in sin, did my mother conceive me. So <laughs> that sin is passed out. What is it? So the baby is sinful inside the mother's womb. That's right. Yeah, that's exactly right. Just immediately. Uh, where did you get that sin? Well, the bloodlines of Adam and Eve. Bloodlines of Adam and Eve. Uh, I, I have a problem with the statement that some of us don't sin as much as others. Because I think we all sin. Yep. All the time. You know, all right. And I, well, I think that, that doesn't really... Well, I mean, let's believe in sinless perfection. Well, now, now, I think they're, they're talking about unsaved people, I think. Well, they're really talking about Christians. Now, I, I, this, I, I do, do unsaved people. I now, let me ask you this. Do some unsaved people sin greater sin, more sin, than other unsaved people? Yes. But in God's sight, they're unsaved. But I mean, I'm talking about the majority, the huge monstrous sin wow. versus little sin. The big yes. ones and the other. Anna? Oh. If, you know, if, um, no, if, <laughs> if we break one point of the law, are we guilty? Yeah, yeah, well, that's true. Well, that, I was yeah. going to pull the actual thing, but I can't remember. Yeah, but it'll come but, back to you. But if but God, God said whether we kill, yeah. which we think is a terrible sin, mm-hmm. it's just as bad as if we yeah. lie. Yes. It, it, for God, all, oh, all sin. What sin I'm saying sin. is yeah. the world has degrees of so the gradations of sin, am I right? right? Someone that lies in the world status is not as sinful as one that commits murder or adultery or fornication. I mean, there's certain gradations. Now, let me ask you this. That's the world standard. That's the world standard. Now, about Christians. Uh, do all Christians sin? Yes. Yes. Why do all Christians sin? Because we're sinners. We're sinners. I know, but why is it that makes us sin if we're saved? Yeah, it's flesh. It's flesh. Right, we got the flesh. When is that flesh going to stop making a sin? When we die. When we die, we die. We got to have new bodies. See? Now, let me ask you this: Those Christians who have the flesh and got the Holy Spirit indwelling them, are some of those Christians sinning greater sins than other sins? I think so. They're gradations of sin. I mean, they're both Christians. Am I right? Some Christians sin a little. I mean, it should stop. We don't. We shouldn't sin at all. But I mean, there's certain types of sins Christians do. And now, what's the answer to Christian sin? Oh, excuse me, cast. It says in Scripture that God hates liars and He hates uh, people that are frail. So yes, He's not making it's sort of saying there we're all sinners. Oh yes, you know, yeah. sinners. no matter what it is. You wouldn't think you would. Think you would say more like a murderer or a, a killer or something. But He said pride. Yeah. And um, what was the other one? I forget already. Yeah. Liars. 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 But, a, but, a, but a Christian that's proud, Liars. Sorry, that he yeah. doesn't. A Christian who's proud and says that he doesn't sin as much as another Christian, he's a big sinner. He's a big he's, sinner, a big yeah. liar, and right. sinner both. That's because right. Because he's saying that he doesn't he's sin as much as somebody else. That's true. So, <coughs> the and what's the remedy for Christians who sin, like all of us? What's our remedy when we sin? What is it? Okay. What's the verse? All right, let's say it. First John 1 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What does it mean again to confess? 
The Greek. The Greek. Agree with God. What's the Greek word? Homo legato. Homo legato. What does homo mean? Same. Same. What does legato mean? To say. To say the same thing about the sin that God said. That's to agree with God. And if we do agree with God and confess the sins, what is God faithful to do what? Forgive us. Forgive us the sins. Cleanse us. All right. And when we sin, do we lose our salvation? No. No. But we lose what? Fellowship. 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 And so it's very important that we go back into fellowship constantly. How, long, how often should we get back into fellowship? As often as we, as often as we sin. Yeah. Well, that's every minute, every hour, every week, every hour, whatever it is. Uh, some have said this, keep short accounts with God. What does that mean? Keep short accounts. Confess it. Confess it. Confess it. Confess it. <laughs> I mean, it's clean. God wants us clean. Yeah. All right, so uh, notice in verse 21, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Unto eternal life. We said our eternal life begins when again? When we accept Christ. As soon as we generally trust the Lord Jesus as our Savior, accept Him, we have eternal life. Remember in the book of John, the Gospel of John, the chapter 11, verse 25, 26, along in there, He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Remember? He that believes in me, though he were dead, 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 dead till he lived. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? What does it mean, shall never die? In what sense? Eternal life. We don't die spiritually, but we don't die. So eternal life is eternal. Uh, and that's what Jude is talking about here. Unto eternal life. And then in verse 22, and of some may have compassion. What is compassion? Benevolence. Well, benevolence could be, what is it? So maybe sympathy, yeah, compassion. Yeah, lots of In other words, you, patio, uh, passion in the Latin is feeling, comes with, with feeling, feeling with somebody. And so in Greek, syn patheo, that's with feeling, that's sympathy. So the Latin is compassion, the Greek is sympathy. So it's the same same type of thing. Yes, yeah, huh? Isn't there something about Jesus and compassion? One of the Gospels, I can't come up with it. Small compassion. He had compassion on them. Uh, where, what did that take place? Uh, where was it? He had compassion on the multitudes. On the multitudes. Because there were sheep having no shepherd, right? Yes. Yeah. And, and, uh, and the thief on the cross, he showed, even when Christ was dying on the cross, he showed the deep compassion. Yes. Uh, even when he was dying, yeah. he remembered the thief on the cross. Right. And also, he remembered the people that crucified him. He said, forgive us. Forgive I know. Forgive See. them, for they, know what forgive them for they don't know what they do. It's like the Deacon Stephen, when he was dying, what did he say about that? Lord, lay not this, Lord, not this sin to their charge. So you see, that's compassion, isn't it? So uh, uh, we, we have compassion. Now this is, uh, some have compassion, uh, feeling with them. Now, what is the difference between sympathy, which is this compassion, and empathy? What's the difference between sympathy and empathy? Sympathy. 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 Yes. What about empathy? So right in it. See, feeling right along with with them. See, right. In, just just you're right there, uh, feeling that same thing that they're feeling. Yeah. My wife gets sick when she's too much empathetic. If that person is sick, if she's too empathetic, she gets sick. Now some people are that way. We can't. A lot of people can't be uh, em empathetic with empathy. But just sympathy, but if you go too far, then you're pretty well you're sick yourself. Uh, so anyway, but have some have compassion. Uh, the Lord Jesus, making a difference, what would that mean? Maybe the eternal difference. The eternal lives. difference, okay. They make the eternal difference. Uh, what would be the eternal differences that we would make if we had? Come in, Antoinette. Uh, what would be some of the, what would be some of the differences that we might have? Making a difference. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, that makes a difference in their lives. In their lives. They see, they see a, a difference in you. All right. So, um, so if we have compassion on somebody, we can make a difference as well. Uh, now, in verse twenty-three, it says, "Others save with fear." What is? How do you save somebody? Can you save anybody? No. no. What does it mean then? Rescue. Rescue or rescue them. Save, deliver them in a sense of deliverance. That's right, deliverance and rescue. Uh, around Jude chapter 1. Yeah, Jude chapter 1. Verse 23. Verse 23 now, verse 23. 
say we're delivering them with fear. Why would you have a little bit of fear when you're trying to deliver somebody from their sin? To do your best yes. out of fear that yes. if you don't do your best, right. they might not accept Christ. Okay, Sam? Because you don't want to be um, stained with their sin. All right. Yes. You don't want to be stained. You don't want to be stained with their sin. Oh. Now, different sinners, you're trying to have compassion for them and try to lead them to the Lord. <clears throat> what might you catch if they have something if you're too close to them? What is it? Their ways. Their could be their ways. That's right. Could be their ways. And if they have a, a disease that's communicable, you could catch that if you're not careful. In other words, there's certain things. You catch their, their sinful lives. Yeah, that's right. It's a, their way of life and their sins that they do. Uh, and in fact, some of them, if you get too close to they could beat you up. They could knock you apart. They could do all kinds of things. There's some you say were delivered with fear. Now, uh, pulling them out of the fire, what does that mean? Hell. They pull out of hell. Can you pull somebody out of hell? What would that mean? Pull yeah, them. If they're on the slope, slippery slope. Okay. Pull them out of going to hell. We, we couldn't get them in hell. Can anybody going to hell ever leave hell and come back? No. 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 Well, that would be, um, my brother, when he was dying, um, the Lord, I mean, just put on my heart that I should go in and witness to him. And that's what I said to him. You have one foot on earth and your other foot's in hell. Uh -huh. And if you don't make a decision, you're going to end up in hell. Yes, that's a very good telling that. Uh, Jacob Romer from Texas. What is oh, Jacob, how are you? Oh, good, preacher. Good, good. Uh, I was thinking that uh, others say with fear that, that uh, you know, I, I was thinking of that verse out of Proverbs. Do not go with an angry man lest you learn his ways. I have personal experience with the brothers sometimes, uh, Sometimes I just have to uh, put it on hold with this guy. Yes, that's good. All right, thank you. Let's wave to Jacob Bromer in Texas. Wave, Jacob. Good to see you. Thank you for coming. What's the Pardon me? Talking about a lost person or safe person? Probably, probably a lost person. I'm not sure. Yeah, Cass? I just want to add a little bit to this. I just said, yes. I was really fearful. I was like trembling. I was so scared. Uh -huh. because, uh, I had witnessed him before and he refused me. Your brother? Uh, yeah. yeah. And I was really scared he would do it again. But oh. he didn't. He didn't refuse. Praise God. Yeah, I'm very glad. Well, see, some, as Jacob said, there's some people you get too close to, they could attack you, they could do a lot of things, uh, but with fear, but you try to deliver them. Sometimes they don't want to listen to the gospel, they'll hit you or knock you or slap you. I would curse you or anger, be angry like this man just said. So uh, some of them, you have to be very cautious and very careful. Uh, some may attack you physically, either knock you down or whatever. If you're a woman, they may rape you. I mean, just different things. It depends on who you're talking with. Some are very seriously, uh, very seriously wicked, and you've got to be very careful. With fear, be careful. Pulling them out of the fire. In other words, what did we say that meant? Pulling them out of the fire. Rescue them from hell. Rescue them from hell. So they don't go to hell. Pulling them out before they get there. Once you get to hell, you can't go. Remember, remember the rich man Lazarus in Luke 16, mm -hmm. I believe it is. What did the Lord say about that parable? Of that even if a man comes back from hell, that's or right. even if a man comes back from the dead, they will not, they're not believe. They don't believe you. And also, what else did he say about that? What's your question again? The and rich man Lazarus. Yeah, that's right. The, the the prophets, prophets. Yeah, the but can they get out of the damnation no, section? The great gulf. The great gulf fixed. They yeah. cannot go. Once they're there, they're in the lake of no that would be the show of the lake of fire or the uh, the, the, the damned section of Hades or show. Yeah, Bob? Well, President Biden is cha chasing the uh, uh, vice president. people. Yeah. Vice President, he's chasing through the gates of hell. He's going to chase them into there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's rather interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. I don't even know that Biden believes there's a hell. A lot of people swear by hell, use the hell all the time. They don't even believe there is such a thing. Yeah, Tammy? Oh, I explain that, huh? I don't. I don't know what he said. So. Yeah. Will you explain? He he was speaking to somebody who was very sympathetic. I think it sounded like he's running for president. Uh, he, he, he said, "We've got to chase these terrorists to the gates of hell. That's where they reside." Yeah, well, applause, applause. Yeah, I, I chase that. them to the gates of hell. So this is good rhetoric. I mean, he uh, said a lot of things about killing them in hell. See, the yeah. president at the time was saying nothing. 
Is that fancy? Right. So it like, sounds like uh, Biden's real, real rough, and, uh, and Obama sort of, sort of calm. Mm -hmm. Obama, Biden says a lot of things he doesn't ever mean. It's but just political. So just I don't, I don't go with anything Biden says. Uh, he will do what Obama tells him to do because he's his vice president. Obama says quite probably Obama got him later. Calm down there. Calm down there. I don't want you to talk like that. That's too rough. Quiet yeah, down. That was a big Oh, I know it was pretty good. All right, so what was my last question? I forget. Yeah. Holy mouth. Okay, so they don't go to hell. Be sure lead them to the Lord. Make sure they're saved and born again before it's too late. See, they had just uh, beheaded. Beheaded. Uh, somebody. That's true. And now they got another one that just beheaded after that. So there's three of them so far that we know about. Those are beheading people all the time, but these are three that at least were on TV. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. So pulling them other with fear. Now notice, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. What does that mean? Hating even the garment spotted. Or could be spotted by sin. Could be these people have have such wicked garments. There's certain things that are catching. Are they? Yeah. Well, it's sort of like the garments. I mean, those that have are saved have the garments of righteousness upon mm -hmm. them. So the whole idea is that their garment, because they're not saved, is all spotted by the flesh. Mm -hmm. and, and so all that sin is all over them. Sin is all over them. Now, yeah, so. you could hate the garments. See, some of the garments are wicked and corrupt. And as I say, there may be some things that are catching. Some things that are catching. Some things that are communicable, uh, like uh, this Ebola is communicable, is it not? Just anything at all that's close by, breathing and different things. And so with some diseases, they're communicable. Well, there's tel TB, tuberculosis. They put in special rooms and so on, and big signs on the door, do not enter. And so, on. so it could be, now, uh, the, for instance, AIDS, that can be communicated by blood, Especially if you touch anything that's got, but you can get that. See all these different. So who knows what they have, what they have? But got to be very careful with some people uh, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so we've had 21, 22, 23. Let's read 24 and 25 together. <coughs> now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Who is the Him that is able to keep you from all? Who is that? Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. I believe it is. God the Father, yes, but the Lord Jesus Himself. Keep you from, keep you, who's the you? Christian. Christian. What does it mean to keep you from falling? What's that? Mean? From sinning. From sinning, falling into sin, and falling out of the pleasures of the Lord. Now, how is the Lord able to keep us from falling? Because He always provides a way of escape. Provides a way to escape that you may be able to, to bear it. Uh, that's true. And what must the Christian do or continue to do in order to keep from falling based upon God's provision? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, which is? We need to correct. trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all my heart. Lean not on my own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. And Cass? I was going to say, That's right, just off and on. See, this is like the problem. It's, like, it's just one of those things that happens today. Maybe by next week we'll get a fix. Yes, Cass? No, I just said, well, we That's all right. It's almost the Lord by reading his word. Yes, by reading his word in prayer. That's to keep us from falling. Now, what's that other verse? Beware, let him. Think of the standard that he must be false. What does that mean? Yeah. Don't be too confident in the flesh. Don't be too confident. Yeah. You think it can't fall. Keep beware. Trusting. Yeah. Yeah, Anna? It's like pride goes before destruction and a quiet spirit before Yes, that's another good verse on that. Haughty spirit before a fall. He's able to keep you from falling. And what else is the Lord Jesus Christ able to do in verse 24? Present you faultless. What does that mean? Well, there you can see the lights on. See, it's off and on. See, we don't know. Oh, it goes on by itself. It goes on by itself. See, maybe it's a short in the in the uh, 
extension cord. Somebody says that stored in the extension cord, when it gets heated up, it goes off. When it cools down, it comes off. We'll have to maybe change the extension cord. Dan and I will figure that out tomorrow, probably. At least Dan will. I don't know anything about it. I think it's the bulb that's kind of No, we got a new bulb. The, the old bulb was dead. See, yesterday it was working perfectly. This morning it turned on, it didn't turn. So Dan went a million miles away and got a big, three of them. The three new, the special guy, one of long rods, I got skinny, long like that. Well, what was it, Dan? Where, where was it to end? It was about three miles away. What, what's, the, what's the name of it? It's a hardware store. Hardware store. The Dan knows. I wouldn't know where to go, but he went and got it early in the morning. So he's got a new bulb. In fact, he got three new bulbs. He got two more. Wait. I think it's just to keep to keep paying attention. To keep paying attention. Okay. I'm glad for that. Please. That would people don't fall asleep, right? People don't fall asleep. All right. Now, the second thing is keep us from falling. What's the second thing in this verse again? Present, present you faultless. Now, how, how can the Lord present us, save people faultless? In Christ. In Christ. Are they in position faultless? How about in practice? Are they faultless? No. Not in practice. But in position. position. What does it mean to be positionally false? Because we have the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Justification. Righteousness of Christ. Justification, righteousness of Christ, positionally, in the books of heaven. But our standards right here, what we're standing rather, what we're doing right now, we, we should try to be false. We should try to aim to false. If you aim at nothing, what? Hit You'll hit it every time. <laughs> if you aim at nothing. So we've got to have a goal. To be faultless, even though we can't, right? But before the presence of His glory, what is when will that take place? Before the presence of His glory. When we get to heaven. Or probably when we get to heaven. Before, the, when we have eternal life, the result, of the, the possession of it in, in heaven, with new bodies and so on. But faultless. Would that be technically the white throne judgment? Well, that would be for the unsaved. It'd be the judgment seat of Christ, probably, for the Christian seat. Okay. Yeah, for the Christian, the judgment seat of Christ, and. Uh, Possibly so. Uh, after the judgment seat of Christ, how many Christians will be building with haywood and stubble? After. We don't know. How many will be after building? After the judgment seat of Christ. Right. Before the judgment seat of Christ. Who knows? Right? Who knows? We don't know. How many will be building with gold, silver, and precious stones? Well, maybe a few. Maybe a few. Maybe. But uh, if the person in the judgment seat of Christ, 1 Corinthians 3, if the fire is going to try these works that we've been building on Christ, those that are saved, uh, what does the fire do with gold, silver, and precious stones? Purify. Purify. What does the fire do with hay, wood, and stubble? Burns it up. Burns it up. Well, now, the people that have been building, the Christians, born again Christians, have been building on hay, wood, and stubble. Fire will burn up their works. Will they be saved or will they go to hell? They'll be saved. They'll be saved. Get so as by fire. Get so as by fire. As I said, yes. That's sort of like the skin of your teeth. Maybe skin of your teeth, sort of. In other words, uh, the Lord Jesus does not demand perfection of us while we're here. He'd like to have us perfect. He says uh, be it. perfect for I'm perfect, no, the Father's perfect. But uh, we can't be any of us perfect, but He wants to aim at that and try to get as close to perfection as we can. So He's able to again, make us faultless. What does faultless mean, by the way? Perfect. Perfect, no fault. Uh, Paul? Uh, could a person who has heard the gospel many times and, you know, whether it's a man or woman or verse, you know, whether, whatever, and it's gone through, you know, life not wanting to accept Christ, can he or she, when they're on their deathbed, uh, actually ask, ask Christ to come into their lives and even, even when they're on their, and they're on their deathbed, can, can that happen? What do you think? Yes. Yes, yes. yes I think, think, think they can. Yeah. That's what thief on the cross. Uh, he did he get baptized by the way? No. Did he baptize in baptism for salvation? No. 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 Some no. some churches teach that. Yes. Some churches no. teach that. Not baptized. Yes, he's not. He's lost. They, they the do. thief had no baptistry. Nothing. But no, no, they teach that you can't be saved unless you're baptized. Some churches. Yeah. Jesus yeah. overrides that because he said to that, you'll be with me in paradise. That's right. I don't care what that minister's saying. Exactly. Jesus said it. Today, shall thou be with me in paradise. At that time, where was paradise? Part of the earth. Part of the earth is a paradise section of Sheol or Hades. Mm -hmm. Paradise section. 
And then after the resurrection, what happened to paradise? That's right. He was taken to heaven. He gave captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. And all the whole section of the paradise section of Hades or Sheol, Old Testament, was transferred to heaven after the bodily resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, uh, faultless, the presence of His glory. But what's this next part mean? With exceeding joy. What's that? With exceeding joy. Uh, gladness, happiness. Gladness. Happy. Yes. This is His work. The Lord Jesus will have exceeding joy. That's true. Uh, faultless for His presence with exceeding joy. I think the Lord will be. Uh, I think it says in the Psalms, we read it this morning, one of the verses, that uh, the, it's in the heavens there'll be glory, there'll be praise, there'll be happiness, there'll be contentment. The Lord is happy with the death of His saints. Blessed is the death of His saints, something like that. It's in other words, the death of His saints. Thank you. Ten. This morning we talked about that. Yeah. Psalm say that verse again? Good. Say it again. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints. Yes, Cass? I was just thinking we're going to be glorious. Uh, we can't even imagine what it's going to be like. I mean, we can sort of imagine. It. Yes, you're right. I don't think we'll get the full. No. Yeah. So That's all right. It'll come down. 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 It'll now, the last verse, to the only wise God. Who is He? Our Savior. Our Savior. Okay. Jesus so, that, what does that say about the deity of Christ? What does it say about that? Um, yes. That it's real. That, that it's real. He's, he's God, our Savior. Our Savior. Uh, and we think it's the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, sometimes God the Father is called our Savior, so it could be referring, but uh, to the only wise God, our Savior. Uh, and we believe it's the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, uh, what are the... The seal went back on. So you just have to wait a while. Be patient. There's light. <laughs> now, now, what are some of the things that we're to give praise to, or what are the epithets, or not epithets, but the the items of words that we should give to our Savior in verse 25? Glory, majesty, dominion, power, now and ever. He's worthy of all these things. Isn't he? Uh, did he show his glory while he was on earth? The Lord Jesus Christ. At the Mount of Transfiguration. At Transfiguration, he was showed part of the glory, didn't he? And uh, will he show his glory in heaven? Yes. yes. Did God the Father show the glory to Moses any time at Mount yes. Sinai? Yes. What, 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 did, what happened to Moses? Yes. Well, it turns right, he, he glowed. He glowed, okay. Beyond he the age, uh, wisdom came. He, he shone, all right. And what did he have to do when he came down to the mountain to the people? Put a veil on his face. Put a veil on his face. And when he went back up there, he took the veil off and talked to the Lord. So apparently, the glory of the Lord is is effulgent. It's Shekinah. The Shekinah. Shekinah means to dwell. The dwelling presence of the Lord. Shekinah. The glory. Uh, so to be glory and majesty. What is majesty? It's like he's our king. Like a king. He's, he's worth of all the power that anybody has. He's in charge. Majesty. The one and glorious. Glorious. We saw that also, did we, in the Mount of Transfiguration, the majesty, the glory, uh, the effulgence, the whiteness, whiter than the snow, Lord Jesus' garments were put. And the Father showed that to Peter, James, and John. A dominion. What's dominion mean? You have your power, you control. You are in charge. Says, when will Lord Jesus have complete and total control of this world? Right now. At the millennial well, reign. He has it in a sense, but is he exercising that power? No. 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 When will he exercise the complete full power? Uh, at the rapture. Okay, and at, no, at the millennial reign of Christ, yes. he will put down all sin and wickedness and corruption. A thousand years reign. Oh, that's going to be amazing, isn't it? That's going to be amazing because yes. right now, look at all these yeah. evil people. Uh, just going astray and nobody seems to be putting them out. But there he will have complete and total dominion. I'm sorry, excuse me, they're going astray and what? Pardon me? What'd you say? I, I mean, say these people today going astray and wicked and sinful and so on all over this country, all over the world. So, yes, you know, always. Like the ISIS and the terrorists and everything. Yes, uh, John? Right now, Satan's trying to have temporary God 
uh, per, uh, permissible control over things now? Presently. What is one of his titles? A Prince God of the world, the, the Prince of the, the, the Power of the Air. Prince of the Power of the Air and the God of the Prince of the and the God of this world, right? Mm -hmm. Called the God of this world. Yeah, the Paul. Uh, I mean, I know that God will put all the wrong doors <coughs> into the millennium, but, but I mean, if, I guess if he wanted to, he could do it. He could do it in this, in this present time now, then, right? I mean, He's able to, but uh, it's not his will that he does it. That's the only thing. Uh, he has order, right? Yeah, he's, he's got order. And uh, he's going to be... My mother always said that we're going to do it ourselves this time with the weapons. What is that? Yeah, that we will do it ourselves with the weapons. That was her idea. That's, that's the worldly idea, to do it ourselves with the weapons. But uh, the power is, is strong, and uh, at this point, the Lord is not in charge. Now, some people teach... Uh, that the Lord Jesus Christ is reigning right now and he's in charge. Of, see, it's a strange thing. Uh, he's still the sovereign that we should look up to, but Amen. he's not ruling and reigning over this world yet. Look at all the sovereign. devil's people, see? And, uh, and that's why the post-millennial believers, that Christ is coming after the millennium, after we set up our own millennium, yes. <laughs> is that wise or unwise? It seems like uh, the uh, philosophy of humanism, where we're going to achieve greater and greater things, mm -hmm. mankind, mm -hmm. and we're going to we're going to make things wonderful. Well, that's ridiculous yeah. because we're we're sinful. Yes, okay. absolutely. But see, that's the thing. Years ago, in the early 1900s, that was a very popular doctrinal, eschatological future belief, post millennial. After the millennium, we're going to bring our own in, and then after that, the Lord Jesus is going to return. No, that's why we believe in pre-millennial, you know, before the millennium. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Can we touch upon that on Thursday night about how, like, the governments of this world they can't get anything accomplished; only the government of God. Yes, in that, His that, ways. That's exactly right. Yeah, Eddie. I was in church before when they said that. Yeah, you remember that? <laughs> See, that, so it's it's been a completely uh, out rule over rule. A dominion and power. How much power does the Lord Jesus Christ have? Unlimited. Where does it say that? What scripture? All power. All power. power. And glory. We'll finish the verse. <coughs> Give unto me heaven and earth. And what's, where is that found? Matthew 28. So it's the Great Commission. It's all power is given to me in heaven or glory and preach the gospel over. Yes, Father. What is that Jesus laid aside? You know, when he didn't do his whole power. You know, oh, the yeah, the theology. It's, it's called the giving up the exercise of his power, exercise of his, his power and miracle for his own personal good. See, that's the giving up of his, his power. In other words, some people are teaching, and some of the Gen General Association of Early Baptist Churches the teachers were teaching that the Lord Jesus did not have all the attributes of God while he was on the earth. We believe that all the attributes. But it was a voluntary disuse of his attributes for his own personal use. See, when Satan says, turn these stones into bread, he could have. But when he says, cast yourself down, he could have. But he didn't for his own time. But he has the attributes of God. He has the omnipotence, omniscience, omnipresence. But he just refused for his own personal value. Is that what you mean, honey? Yes, that's the teaching of the Browns, Ken Brown. And Ken Brown, son. over in North John's Jersey. Uncle. Yeah, and Dwayne Brown had it, and his Persephone pastor. pastor has that as well. What is it? Yes, a lot of people teach that. And uh, that's the word kenosis, isn't it? That kenosis, that's right. They believe the kenosis. He gave up, but you see, the kenosis, they say he gave up all his divine attributes in Philippians chapter 2, but that's false. He gave up the use of those attributes for his own personal use and glory. And so that's the battle that rages in the churches, many churches. Jesus could have walked down from the cross if he wanted to. Absolutely. In fact, uh, he didn't have to go to the cross if he wanted to. Remember? In the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, they said uh, Peter had a sword. Right. He cut off of somebody's ear. What was yeah. his name? Uh, yeah. What was his name? I forget. Malchus. Right. What ear was it that was cut off? Right ear. Was it his left? I don't remember. You remember what I said? <laughs> Yeah, I don't cut off his ear. Did he put it back? Yes, he restored it. But but at that time, is it in the scripture which year it was? 
Right here. I think it says, of what, is it in Matthew? It's in the Garden of Gethsemane, Matthew 26, 27. Somebody find that up and look for it. If he was right handed, he would have. It does say if it's we right handed, he's left here. I remember. Here, here's that. the answer right here. Probably calling. It's in there. <laughs> it says what he ever was. Yes, hello, Jacob. What you got? You got the answer to that? Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was very handed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That's certainly, I'm millennial, so it's not possible. Okay, thank you, Jacob. Jacob from Texas, waving into Jacob. Second wave, okay. Yes. Anybody find that in Matthew 26? It's in John 18.10. Okay. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. I knew. <laughs> I knew it was a right ear. Right right I knew it was in there. Now, if it's his right ear, what hand was Peter? Left hand or right hand, do you think? Right hand. Left hand. Right hand? Left hand. Probably left hand. Like that. See, the left hand is cut off. He could have gone like this. Okay. Kathy, what about? I don't want to think about it. Oh, I don't want to think about it. Anna, what do you think about it? He could have been facing him, and then he would have done this. I don't think we. I mean, there's enough detail. I realize, but. Eddie, go ahead, Eddie. He was ambidextrous. He used the two hands. Right. Well, right, right. Oh, so, so Paul, like, if he was facing the man, yes. his right arrow would be to the Peter's left arm. Right. To cut right. off a clean you cut, you, you probably it's very difficult going like this. Very difficult. <laughs> probably right like that. They could have been turned at different angles. They could have been turned different angles. Right. <laughs> so anyway, we don't know. <laughs> But the, but the point of my bringing that up was this. What did the Lord Jesus say to Peter when he cut off Malchus' ear, his right ear? What did the Lord Jesus say? Put up that sword in thy sheath. What else did he say? The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? See, in other words, he could have stopped the whole arrest, but shall I not drink it? And another occasion, he said, could I not pray the Father and give me 12 legions of angels to deliver? See, see, it was not the Father's will that he leave the cross. In the Garden of Gethsemane, in his prayer, what did he say? Not, nevertheless, not my will, but thine of God. What was his question? If it possible, this cup be removed from me. And nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. He did not shirk the, the terrible disasters of Calvary. He did not shirk. Yes. That's right. Anna? Well, if anybody's interested, the Greek word here for power is exousia. Good. That's very good. Exousia. All power. As opposed to another word. All right. So, and they're both now and forever. What's that mean? Now and ever. Always. Always. Only like that. And then amen. Any other comments on Jude chapter 1? Yes, Anna. All right, Exosius is authority, Dunamis is might, power, strong, <coughs> muscles. That's the difference. Exosius is simply the authority. See, like, like in John chapter 1, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even though they believe on his name. Right, title, authority, that's Exosia. But Dunamis, that's, that's lightning, that's strong, force, you, you know, real strong, it's like dynamite. That's Dunamis from dynamite, that's where we get that. I'm not yeah. ashamed of the power of God. Power of God and salvation. What is that power? The gospel of Christ is the power of God and salvation. Uh, what is that? You got your Greek there, man? I think it's true. It's the power. It's okay, let's see if it's doing She's going to look up for Romans 1.16. While you're at it, Anna, look up uh, uh, Jude one twenty. See if you can find the article. Okay. You say it's there, so it's there. Good, okay. That's good. Uh, any other comments or questions on Jude before I move on to the next book, which is the book of Romans? Ready to go? Any other comments? Okay, let's go to Romans. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, Romans. Okay, Romans chapter 1. Yep. 
Dynamite says there. Well, I'm about to say Dynamite. The Dynamite of God. Okay, very strong, isn't it? Yeah. Very strong. Okay, Romans chapter 1. Are we ready? No. Okay. <laughs> Can we find it? No. Romans 1. All right, let's, let's read verses 1, 2, and 3. By the way, who wrote Romans? Oh. Oh, okay, that's good. What is it? Well, the writer. I mean, who's the writer of Romans? But who gave the words to Paul? God, the, God, the Holy Spirit, through the Lord Jesus Christ, He gave the word. Let's read verses one, two, and three. Paul, the servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which He had promised before by His prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning His Son Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. Paul, a servant of God. What does servant mean? Servant. Slave. What is it? Slave. It means a slave. This is Nula. This is a servant. Uh, what does a slave mean? What does it mean if you're Nula or a slave? What is the implications of that? Owned. Owned, Owned by someone. That's right. Yeah. And doing the will of that someone. Mm-hmm. Not your own will, but doing someone else's will. Mm-hmm. He was a servant. Doing someone else's will. <coughs> servant of Jesus Christ. Uh, when did he become a servant of Jesus Christ? When he got saved. When he got saved, rode to Damascus. What was he before he became a servant? He was a leader. First leader of the church, as a leader of the devil's crew, the other, other, he was a Pharisee, and he was an evil man, he wasn't a servant of Christ. Then called to be an apostle. What does it mean, called? Chosen. Chosen, all right, selected, picked out, called. Uh, to, what is it? Oh, to, to, was it, was it that? Saul. Saul. Oh, I was thinking of him on the roads to Damascus. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He was called like that. Yes, Bill. Uh, for any of those people who say that uh, Paul was not an apostle, uh, but that other fellow, uh, Matthias, Jack, Matthias yeah. was the apostle. Well, it says right here, called to be an apostle. That's right. Who called him? Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Who called Matthias? The other apostles. The other apostles. But they had a vote. How many were in the selection team? Two. Two. Is that a wide variety of people that you can choose from? And they did it how? By lot. lot. And what do lots do? They're cast. But in what what happens? It's sort of it's a choice made. But it's sort of. It's, it's, it's like, it's like drawing straws. Drawing straws. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's not very much choice if you got just two people. But uh, we have a person who used to say, if you don't believe Matthias was that apostle, I'm going to leave this church. He's no longer here with us, but I mean, it's terrible. Uh, Paul, here's what I always say. When we come to the book of Revelation, and we see the 12 apostles sitting on the thrones, you'll see who it is. Is it going to be Matthias sitting there with the other 11 or is it going to be Paul? Oh. I think it's going to be Paul, yeah. Tammy? But it didn't make any sense because it doesn't agree with hyper-dispensationalism. The whole idea that it, the gospel is, or the, the, not the gospel, yeah. but the gospel was only in the books written by Paul. Yeah. Well, why would why would we want to accept that if we don't believe that yeah. he was actually the apostle? Sorry, that exactly. That's, that's right. Victory. That's right. In other words, the man that, that, that said that it was going to be Matthias, is a hyper dispensationalist who believes only the books of Paul, what we should use for this is, nothing else. So he should, if he's in favor of Paul, he should have said Paul. He's right at that, I mean, inconsistent. He said, All right, call to be an apostle. What does apostle mean? A follower. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a follower, but what else? Sent for Apo is fourth and Stello is sent. Sent for someone that's sent for us. Uh, our missionaries today are sent forth in a certain sense, and mission and mito means to send. Yeah, Eddie? Is it apostle and, um, yeah, well, sorry, apostle and, um, uh, the other one's the same thing? Uh, disciple? Disciple? Yeah, yeah. It's a kind of the same thing. I think we're all... Well, you see, in the calling of the apostles, uh, they're in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. The Lord Jesus called them various disciples, and of them, he chose twelve and called them apostles. Apostles. So but, disciples is general, but apostles are special. But, but, all, but, but all disciples, right? Yeah, all disciples but, are not apostles. That the Lord, right. These are the ones the Lord Jesus called. Now, sometimes they're not the, some of the twelve that are called apostles, in a sense, a, a lower sense, in the New Testament. You find the apostle. Yeah, that could be. The apostle. Well, some are called apostles, 
uh, they use that word, but they're not one of the twelve. See, that's what I mean. But it, the bottom line is, we're all disciples, all true believers, ain't we? Aren't we? We're supposed to be disciples. Yes. Right. Yeah, but we, but right. what does this? What does disciple mean? Follow. 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 But, but if yeah. disciples from the Greek word manthano, mathetes, from manthano, what does manthano mean? Uh, follow? Anna? Yeah. It's great to me. I don't know that language. Anna? Learners. Manthano means to learn. See, so they're learners. So disciples are learners. And uh, Montana's Greek yeah. means to learn. See that Mate taste is from Montana. Mate taste. I've never heard this one before. Well, <laughs> stick around. <laughs> stick, around <laughs> stick around another 66 years and hear some. <laughs> All right, so uh, he's an apostle, called an apostle. Now, separated under God's word. What does separated mean? Set apart. Set apart. Is that good or bad? That's good. That's good. It's off. I'm going to come back. Look, just for, for, for patience. I need for patience with these lights. <laughs> so, uh, so this. I think when I don't know something, this light gets off. Yeah. Can, can you see? Can you see it anyway? You have to really have good eyes to see in the dark. Um, now, what's that? You know the light is off. Yeah, I know. So, uh, uh, separated. What do we say about that? What is the, what does separated mean again? I, I, we, set, apart. Set, apart. Set, set apart. Set apart. Now, is it good to be separated unto the gospel of God? What would that mean? If you're separate unto the gospel. Well, we don't fellowship with unbelievers. Don't fellowship unbelievers and go on to be with other false teachings. Just the gospel. And his life was Paul's life changed any when he met Christ. That doesn't happen immediately yes. either. No, he came back. Yeah, Paul, did you see that? Paul, did you see that light just came back on? I'll go ahead, Paul. Uh, doctor, I'm sorry to interrupt you, uh, but did you uh, inform a bus gets here that my bus comes? Well, the bus is going to come early, so we're between uh, uh, two bills. Uh, look out for that bus. Because they estimate about two fifty. Not yet, not yet, but when it comes. About uh, 257, okay. So it's anywhere between 237 and, and uh, uh, 317. Okay, 237 and 317, so we'll kind of look at it. We'll kind of hear it rumble. Hear it rumble. Maybe, maybe the light will go off and we can see it better. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, if you're not... Now, but did Paul, let me ask the question. Was Paul's life anywhere changed when he came to Christ? Yes. How was it changed? Completely. He went from being the persecutor to being the persecuted. Persecuted be the persecuted. That's right. They were after Paul. But was he persecuted? Yes. Yeah. Did he yes. undergo any difficulties? Yes. Did he have to pay a price? Yes. Did that stop him? No. No. He counted it all as done. That's right. Absolutely. He counted it as just nothing for the joy of the Lord and to serve the Lord his rest. Separated to the gospel of God. He was faithful. Did Paul's gospel change from time to time? No. Uh, what does gospel mean? Good news. Good news. And we'll call it good news. And good news concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's say Romans 1.16 together. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believes it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. What two words did the Gnostic critical text remove from Romans 1.16? Of Christ. Of Christ. This is not ashamed of the gospel. Huh. Any gospel, any good news. Good news about the tooth fairy or Bugs Bunny or any good news. <laughs> about the ISIS, about the slaughters, or beheadings, whatever news. But of Christ. Good news about not failing organic chemistry. Good news about not failing organic chemistry. That's good news. That's very good news. All right. So the gospel of God. Now notice verse number two, which he had promised. Who's the he referred back to? Either one or the other. What do you think? Jesus. Could be, or God, God the Father. It was the gospel of God which he had promised. So probably God the Father had promised, because it refers right to the closest antecedent, which is God, the gospel of God, which he had promised a four. What does that mean? He had promised a four. Before. Beforehand, before the New Testament, God had promised the good news. What are some of the Old Testament places where he promised something of a good news? Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah 52 yeah, 53. 53. Uh, Isaiah 9. Where did he promise in the Old Testament? That he promised that Genesis. Genesis. Uh, chapter 3, wasn't it? Chapter 3, he will bruise your head. He will bruise the, the, 
The Lord Jesus, the seed of the woman will bruise the serpent's head. Yes. They said that, I think Moses said there was a rising of the prophet. Prophet, like unto like me? Yes. And him shall your father's grave. That's good. The prophet is preserved and, and uh, predicted. And uh, in nine, Isaiah 9, government shall be upon his shoulder. He shall be called prophet. That shall see in a great light. That's another part. Uh, but in Isaiah 9, 6, government, government shall be upon his shoulder. It shall be called Yes. Wonderful. Not wonderful, wonderful counselor, the mighty God, yeah. Prince of Peace. Yeah. So, that's all these things are part of the, the future. In fact, when the two on the road to Emmaus, after the bodily resurrection of our Lord, were walking along, what did the Lord Jesus show them? The Holy Scriptures. Holy Scriptures that were talked about Himself. Remember? Yes. Showed them all the things that talked about Himself. Remember that? Yes. So He knew. Because he's the author of these words. He knew exactly where these places were. He talked about himself. It's amazing. So the gospel, which for promised by his prophets. What is a prophet? He tells tells something about the the future future and tells it forth in the Holy Scriptures. What are those? The the Old New Testament. Testament. Uh, Is that another name for the... What do they call the Holy Book? Koran? Is it the name for the Koran? Do they call themselves Holy Scriptures, the, the people that are Muslims? Yep. They, they probably call them the Holy Scriptures, but they're not the Scriptures of the Bible, see? And, and there's other other uh, people that have holy things, too. Like, what is the Holy Book for the Christian science people? What's their Holy Book? Be the Scriptures. Uh, isn't that what it's called? The, what's, the, what's the textbook? Science. science and health. That's it. Yeah, science and health are key description. And uh, the, the, the Mormons, the Mormons, what do they call their book? Book of Mormon. Mormon. Yeah, and then, then the Indians. The Indians have, what are the Indians? The, the American Indians. They have a book. Well, they have a number of books of, of different things. Is it the, the Vedas? I don't know what they have. So I'm thinking of the American Indians. Well, well, that's not that's hi, Jacob. What you got? Yes, sir, that's the way. Uh, this, I, hate to, I hate to be late to the party here, but uh, this separated under the gospel of God uh, uh-huh. in the uh, in that uh, history of fundamentalism, the, the first uh, article of the, of the uh, separation is separated uh, unto, unto God, unto the Lord. Uh-huh. But I just want to say this thing out of First uh, Peter chapter twenty-three: uh-huh. being born again, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abides forever. Amen. So, number one, we have to be born again, and number two, we have to, uh, with the Holy Spirit and His truth and His Word, uh, this is how the living Word and, and the written Word of God can get close to Him. Amen. Okay, thank you, Jacob. Third wave, third wave for Texas. Okay, Jacob, thank you, Lord bless you. All right, so uh, there's there's holy books of different, all different kinds. I don't know what the holy book of the of the Hindus are, the holy book of the that's the Vedas, the Vedas, the yes, and uh, other holy books. But we mean the holy scriptures. How many books in the Holy Bible? Sixty-six books. How many in the Old Testament? Uh, I usually know. How many in the New Testament? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. How do you remember that? Three times nine is twenty-seven. Thirty-nine, twenty-seven. That's how you remember that. Okay. All right. Uh, promise of four. Now then, verse number three. The promises of four time concern whom? His son. What does it mean? His son. Who's the his? God's son. Uh, who was the son? Jesus Christ. And our Lord. What does the our refer to here? Christians. He right into the Christians at Rome, the Christians, believers at Rome. Our Lord. What does Lord mean? Sovereign. Sovereign? All right, there it goes. Not master. <laughs> it just wakes us up. See, it's good to have light. <laughs> so, uh, concerning His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And now, what about the Sonship of Christ? Was it, did it start at His birth? Or was it eternal? What did the scriptures teach? Before, 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 before
eternal sonship. John MacArthur, for many, many years, taught against that. And he went to preach in the book over there in England. And since the pastor of that church didn't believe in the eternal sonship, he just sort of waffled a little bit and wrote an article. But anyhow, eternally, and as always said, how can not the Lord Jesus be eternally the Son when John 3.16 is given to us? Let's say John 3.16 again. God so loved the world that he gave his own begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. How could God give us his only begotten Son if he wasn't his Son before he could give it? See, it, it doesn't make sense. He was always the Son of God. He, he left the... See, that's the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It's in heaven, and He left, Son left, came out here. And as, as the Father said, this is my beloved Son, hear ye Him. So, uh, concerning His Son, Jesus Christ. Uh, now, okay, yes, okay. Is that, uh, 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 well, in the Old Testament, all capitals would be the Jehovah oh, Lord, but concerning the Son of Jesus Christ, our Lord, I think okay. this is just the Kyrios, which is the Master. It's like the uh, one we had before. You all right? Yeah, you have to go early. Okay, that's good. Okay. Thank you for coming. Hurry back. Okay. <laughs> the Son, the Lord Jesus, uh, made of the seed of David. What does that mean? Lord Jesus. Made of the seed of He's in David's line. Lineage. It's very important to see that he was in the Davidic line. Now, was he in the same? He was in the same tribe. What was David's tribe? I guess Judah. Judah. He was of that tribe. But as far as his priesthood, what was the Lord Jesus' tribe? Melchizedek, which is a different, not not, not Levi. It wasn't Levi. Was it? Was some different? I see. He was not Levi. The normal priests were Levi. Lord Jesus, another priest, the order of Melchizedek. You don't know what his line was, a separate priesthood, Lord Jesus. But he was born, does he get that? It's a higher priesthood. A higher priesthood. He was higher priesthood. And so, yes? Could you explain that a little bit? Because I don't understand that. About Melchizedek, and the, like Levi was a certain tribe. Yes. What was well, we don't know what tribe he was, but he's but without father. He was without father, true? without mother, like unto the Son of God. Yes, Anna? Well, Melchizedek was at the tribe of Abraham. It was before the 12 tribes. Before the 12 tribes. Oh, Melchizedek, okay. okay. a Christophany. Yeah. It was a Christophany, yes. Okay. Tammy? But in the book of Hebrews, it talks about that we have a priest in the order of Melchizedek. Yes. And so... He was sort of, he, he may have been a Christophany, is there? Yes, like under the Son so, of God. Uh, an appearance of Christ before he oh. was actually yes. born. Oh, I, that, I understand. Okay, we're going to stop right here for a three, but any other comments or questions before we close? Oh, yes, oh. yes fine. Don't forget the classes, the Genesis classes. Genesis on Tuesday at 4.30. And History of Fundamentalism at Friday, 3 to 4.30. And by the way, Dan has put up class one, class two up on the internet. And I sent that to all the people on the email this morning. All you have to do is click on that, class one, click on two, the video, and you see the whole class, from top to bottom. Very good classes, both of them. So Dan will do that, I'm sure, each week. Oh, good, very good. I'm glad he does. Yeah, very glad. He likes studying. That's good. Very good. He should, he should send an email or call up or something over here. Yes, have him call up. Yeah. Usually when he comes back from work. Oh, okay. He watches what? Oh, okay. Was Friday's class up yet? Yeah, we know just today. Okay. Yeah, this morning. Dan was kind of early. Yeah. Well, you'll learn last night. That's right. It'll be there today. So yeah. 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 Dan did it last night. Last night late, and then this morning early, I saw it was up, so I put it up, sent it to everybody. So you got it all. Any other comments or questions? Everybody should tune in on it. Yes. It's very good if you don't hear it. Hear and if you want to call in at the time, 856-854-4458. We have already somebody on 4452. He's one of the current people. So 4458, and then we'll put you right in. You can listen to the whole class. You can talk, questions and answers. But he does it after work. Okay, any other comments? Okay, let's close with a word of prayer. Our Father, we thank Thee for this book of Jude. We do ask Thee, Lord, that we may understand what it means to have a Savior that is able to keep us from falling. We thank Thee for this. 
keep us, Lord, from that. We tend to fall all the time. Thou canst keep us. Thou canst hold us. We thank You for this Savior. Thank You for Paul and his calling of the Lord Jesus Christ. Called to be an apostle. Called out of his sin. And was made completely separated into the Gospel. Not to change it. Not to alter it. Help us to be firm in our convictions. Guide us and direct us. Give us safety as we go home. And to help bring us back on Thursday. And the Lord, for the, for the comments from the class in our book of Acts on this Thursday Bible study and bring us back also on the Lord's Day next week. We pray in Jesus' name for His sake. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming.